In this video, we're comparing Make and Zapier to determine which automation tool is best fit for your business. We'll take a look at their interfaces, the ease of use for tools for beginners and advanced users, the integration support, the pricing of their tiers, and we'll highlight any additional features that you should consider. So if you're feeling stuck choosing between Zapier and Make for automation, you're in the right place. Now, if you're watching this, you perhaps already have an idea of what these tools do. But in summary, both Zapier and Make are no-code automation tools that facilitate workflows to automate mundane tasks. However, when it comes to the interface, both tools take very different paths to creating automations and workflows. In Zapier, at a first glance, I really do like that they start with a prompt to use AI to build out a new Zap, and I found that for simpler workflows, it gets the job done. Zapier maintains a clean and simple linear format, perfect for beginners and experienced users alike. The task in each Zap transitions from one to the other in each step. You start with a trigger, then you are given the option to add task, and Zapier conveniently labels each step with a number. Now, when you want to configure a trigger or task, you can simply click on the icon and the fields for the operations are presented on the right in a sidebar where you can configure your connections further, affording you the ability to pull and add data from the previous step. Now, their recent visual builder maintains this linear workflow, making it easy to create zaps with its drag and drop functionality. However, if you're dealing with more complex multi-step automations that involve paths and filtered branches, it can become a bit cluttered. Now, Make, formerly known as Integromat, and honestly, I forgot about the old name since I knew it as Integromat years ago, and post-brand, the interface is like a complete overhaul. It's probably one of the core reasons people prefer Make over Zapier. Its visual interface is nothing short of just genius. Make's visually oriented interface excels at transforming complex workflows into immaculate flowchart styles. And to be honest, I found it quite easy to add triggers, create new actions and configure them on the canvas as opposed to in the sidebar. And canvas is actually so apt here because the flexibility to add actions and quickly tinker around makes it feel like I'm actually painting a picture, but with automation. And not to mention, it's so colorful that that might be something that you might really appreciate. Now, one thing to note is where Zapier used paths, Make goes a step further with its routers. While Zapier's paths are easy to navigate, Make's configuration flexibility makes it a bit more easy for automations and a bit more fun to use and easy to understand at a first glance. Now, not to mention, you can click on a button to auto align the workflow if things get a bit too messy. So it's also pretty cool. Now, for the most part, I think the visual workflow of Make is going to be preferred, but there are those who may find the simplicity of Zapier's linear format a bit more sufficient for their needs. Next, let's compare the ease of use of each platform. When it comes to ease of use, right out of the gate, Zapier definitely has the edge. Its simple interface makes setting up new automations a breeze, especially with its linear step format. Now to create a new Zap, you can simply pick from their library of templates, or now with the integration of AI, you can actually type out the workflow that you want to create. Now I've tried the AI prompt feature and for the most part, it works out pretty well once it isn't a complex workflow. Now, if you do decide to start from scratch, it's pretty simple as well. You simply pick your trigger and actions, and in the sidebar, you can configure Zapier as it has instructions to guide you through with the inputs and available data, which makes it really perfect for beginners. Now, for more straightforward business tasks, Zapier keeps coding to a minimum. But if you're diving into advanced workflows involving webhooks or needing non-native features, a bit of coding might be required to get it dialed in. Now, Make isn't a difficult platform to use, but it does carry a steeper learning curve, especially with its beefier toolset. You might bump into terms like binary function or array, which can be a tad overwhelming initially. Now, for those non-techie individuals, some of the terminology might be a bit confusing. However, once you get the hang of it, you can build just about anything in Make. And kudos to Make for offering an academy on Thinkific. It was really great for diving deeper into the platform. I personally was able to learn a few things going through their academy, which proved useful. You can also start with a template or use their AI Assist to create what Make calls scenarios. Now, creating a new scenario is pretty simple. First, you add a trigger and then build out a next step by clicking on the plus icon. And I do love the flexibility of adding multiple connections. And like I mentioned before, it's pretty intuitive with the visual builder. Now, while Zapier has resources like articles and YouTube tutorials, and they are quite top notch, makes robust capabilities appeal more to the intermediate to advanced crowd. So if coding knowledge is part of your skill set, 
you'll find make especially rewarding for intricate automations. In short, for those new to automations or not keen to coding, Zapier might be the go-to tool. But if you are up for a bit of complexity and want to leverage advanced capabilities, then Make might be the platform for you. Now, when it comes to integrations, there's a bit of a numbers game going on here. Zapier comes in strong with nearly 8,000 native integrations, making it super easy to connect across a range of different applications, which is pretty crucial depending on your needs. Because if you don't find the app that you need in your workflow, then, you know, that should probably influence which tool you end up going with. Ah, uh, but hold on, it's not just about the quantity. Make with over 2,000 integrations offers versatility by letting you dive deeper into the realm of the APIs. And this means connecting to more data endpoints and handling tasks like looping through data or triggering multiple actions across services. Now, if you don't know what API means, it essentially means that you are able to connect more data endpoints and handling tasks like looping through data or triggering multiple actions across the services. For instance, Make even supports HTTP modules, allowing for custom integrations, even with services that are natively supported. So while Zapier focus on its ease of use with pre-built integrations and simple workflows, it can hit a ceiling with complex tasks without external help. To sum it up, if you're looking for a tool with vast native connections, Zapier is definitely your winner. But if you need a platform that goes the extra mile in flexibility and you're comfy with some advanced setups, then Make might be the way to go. All right, so let's dive into pricing. And this is where things get a bit interesting because Zapier is definitely the more pricey option here. Sure, they offer a free tier, but with only 100 tasks per month, it's just not feasible for growing needs. After that, you have the professional and team tiers before hitting the enterprise level. Now, Zapier starts at $19.99 a month for just up to 750 tasks at the time of this recording. But as soon as you cross that, you're into the space of 1,500 tasks. And that pricing structure can be a bit misleading. Now, for a business quickly on the rise, the cost can spike quickly. If you need 10,000 tasks per month, well, be ready to shell out $129 if you're on the annual plan or almost $200 monthly. It sounds kind of steep, but hey, you're paying for that reputation and that reliability. If you need more than 2 million tasks, well, it's time to chat with sales, but at that point, you're likely not fretting over the fees. On the flip side, there's Make, offering a friendlier starting point with 1,000 operations per month on its free plan. That's decent for a few simple operations. Make has three tiers before the enterprise, Core, Pro, and Teams each stacking more features along the way. The pro plan, which they recommend, gives you 10,000 operations a month, and the pricing, well, it starts at $16 if you commit annually, or it's closer to $19 if you go from month to month. Now, sure, the price can tick up as your business scales with Make, but honestly, I'd say you're getting more bang for buck with this option. But let's be real here, price shouldn't be your only consideration. There are loads of other factors to weigh in when picking the perfect automation tool. The next factor to consider are the additional features that are specific to each application. In some use cases, this can be the deciding factor or the deal breaker. However, before I dive specifically into what each brings to the table, I want to talk about a particular use case that I attempted to demonstrate with both tools. In my personal business, I use LinkedIn to find potential leads. However, it can be quite tedious to copy a lead information into my CRM. And so I attempted to carry this action out with both Zapier and Make. However, to my dismay, I learned that it just wasn't possible. So I had to revert to Magical, an AI agent automation tool that's a game changer for simple data transfers. Magical seamlessly moves information from one website to Google Sheets or any form field that you need. Plus, it's super handy. You can run automations right on the page you're working on. For straightforward data transfers, Magical is my go-to recommendation. It's perfect for those small but essential automations that handle the mundane tasks. For particularly niche use cases, there have been some pretty neat tools and features that Zapier has implemented recently. They currently offer some unique tools like interfaces, which is essentially a web page that you can configure with Zapier forms, tables, and even a nifty chatbot that you can train to answer questions surrounding your business. Now I've done some light testing with these and I will admit that it is something to consider if you don't already have lead form tools or landing page for socials. On the other hand, Make isn't currently offering these standalone tools and add-ons. However, where Make shines in terms of additional features is its robust feature set and connecting to external applications. Make has really dialed in its webhook manager where you can easily navigate webhooks and test them internally without needing to constantly carry out actions manually. They also sport a fairly powerful API builder to add secret keys for each connection. On this front, Make 
really, really shows its worth for businesses or developers who require these features. So which automation platform are you going to choose? I recommend going with the free option as a trial run to determine which platform works out best for you and for your business. Also, if you need simple transfer features to CRMs, Google Sheets, or other forms, then consider Magical by using the link in the description. In fact, if you click on this video right here, you'll see how you can transfer data from one web page to a Google Sheet with Magical.